Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video we're continuing the Linux journey and we're going to be setting up Vert Manager so that we can have virtual machines running in Linux. Now this is very similar to how we've got things set up like Proxmox. There's a few things that are different under the hood but essentially what this is going to allow is virtual machines running in Mint that you can use for whatever you want be it installing Windows on this machine. I know we've got a dual boot set up, but if you don't want to have a dual boot, this is a good way to get Windows set up. It's also great if you're doing, say, testing. You're a developer, you want to have some virtual machines and do some testing. So we're going to be using the graphical user interface for this via Vert Manager, and it's going to take care of all of the dependencies that we need. And we're even going to be able to install this through the application manager, which is super neat. Anyway, let's hop over now. Let's get this up and running. So over on Linux Mint, and you should be able to use this on most Debian systems, what we're actually going to be using is something called Vert Manager, Virtualization Manager. And probably the easiest way to get this up and running is simply to go onto your start menu, hit the software manager, and just type in Vert Manager. Now that should show up. It's this purpley maroon colored one here. And when we click on that, we're able to just install it simply as a system package. You can obviously do this through the CLI if you wanted to, but to me, it makes sense. We've got the GUI, why not use it? You can also check the version as well, just to make sure it's on the latest version. We can see that it's gonna take 41 megs and 183 once it's installed. So I'm gonna hit install, and then this is also gonna pull down a bunch of dependencies. Now, in the past, when I've done this before, it was actually a little bit more involved. You had to install things like Quemu, Quemu KVM. Those are kind of the multiple layers within the stack that's required to run virtual machines. So typically at sort of that base layer, you've got the KVM, the kernel virtual machine module within the Linux kernel. You've then got sort of Quemu that sits on top of that and can take and make use of that virtualization layer. You've then got vertlib, which sits on top of that, which is kind of like a command line interface. And then you've got vert manager, which sits on top of that. I hope you're with me on that one. So basically what this is going to do is, quite fortunately, install all of that stuff behind the scenes. So we can see some of that here. We can see like Quemu, for example, CPU checker. We can see that libvert is also here. And it looks like there's a bunch of other stuff which I'm not necessarily familiar with, but all of the sort of names make sense. Libvert, Daemon before, I've done that one before. Uh, some of the tools, the Quemu system common. Uh, and Quemu system x86, which I think is the new version that's required for Ubuntu. Anyway, everything is also here, including the Vert Viewer as well, which is great. That's an application that allows you to remotely connect to machines as well that are virtualized. So I'm going to hit continue. That's going to pull everything down. So whilst that's pulling everything down, it's also important to note that there's an additional step that we need to perform after this. And it's basically just around some permissions. So once this is all installed and ready to use, we need to add some permissions to our current user such that it's then got the access that's required to be able to spin up, well, the permissions required to spin up and create virtual machines. So hopefully this will be done in just a second. We'll see if it needs a reboot. I don't think it does. It might be a good idea to give it a reboot anyway, just because it's gonna be enabling lots of new software. So now that that's enabled, like I said before, we can't actually create any virtual machines until we've run the following commands. And that's this one here. So what that's basically doing is modifying the user and giving the right permissions for libvert and also for KVM. So allowing the user we are, that who am I, to have those permissions to be able to run virtual machines. So just before we actually add those, I'll launch this and you'll get a look at the user interface. But as you can see here, unable to connect to Quemu system, verify that the daemon is running. So we're gonna close this down and we're gonna run those permissions. So let's just copy and paste this command. I'll add that to my GitHub, hop into the terminal, Hopefully, once I run this command, those permissions should now have been added. So if I hop back here and then click launch, fingers crossed, yeah, we don't get that error message. Awesome. So we've basically got everything we need now to start spinning and creating virtual machines. So I'm going to close all the stuff down in the background, and I'm going to hop on now onto my browser, and I'm going to download a couple of ISOs, one for Windows and let's say one for Ubuntu. So now that's downloaded, we've got everything we need to be able to spin up our first virtual machine. So given that this is a Linux machine, 
possibly you're not doing a dual boot setup so maybe you want to have a Windows VM so let's set that up right now so the first thing we're going to do is just click this button here for a new VM and it's saying that there's no active connection to install it on I might actually have to do a reboot after I've done those permissions so let me reboot and I'll see you in a minute so after a quick reboot if we click that now for a starting a new virtual machine, you can see that we actually have connected to our local host and we've got what we need to install a virtual machine. Now, what we're going to be using, and thanks to the really handy user interface which makes this simple, is that ISO image. But it is also interesting to see that you can use HTTP or basically network connections if you wanted to. So we're going to do local install media, so we're going to hit forwards. So for me, I'm going to be choosing the Windows we just downloaded. So I want to click Browse Local because by default, it expects them to be in this section here, a bit like how Proxmox does. Hopefully, if I go to Download, you can see here that I've got the ISO file. So it's loaded the ISO file. It's automatically detected that it's Windows 11, so we can actually go forwards again. It's saying it doesn't have permissions for this download folder, so let's allow it to have permissions. I think that should do it, yes. Now we're going to set the memory and the CPUs. So I'm just going to leave that as 8 gigs and 4 cores. That should be enough just to have this up and running. Then we're going to enable some storage for it. I can do 128 gigs and also because this is a virtual machine we can obviously increase that should we need to in the future so i'm going to click forward on that give it a name that sounds fine windows 11. so before we hit finish we can also select the network now i'm just going to use a default virtual network using network address translation but you could also create say a bridge device and if you click that you're able to give it say a name Windows 11 Mint and what that will do is as long as you've got the right things configured i.e. you've got a bridge device set up already we haven't done that yet this would basically show up as a machine on your local network as opposed to just being sort of local to this host so this will basically hide all the traffic as though it's part of this host here which probably isn't ideal if you wanted this to show up and be accessible you're going to have to do some port forwarding on this host but just keeping it simple just getting this up and running we'll hit finish for now that should go away now and create that and as you can see it's starting to boot up just like a normal windows 11 installation so i'll skip ahead and i'll get this windows 11 up and running and i'll see you on the other side once it's done and so now I've completed the installation and I basically have a working Windows 11 VM inside Linux Mint. And what's good about this is obviously if there are certain things that simply won't run on Linux Mint or just things you haven't got time to fix at the moment, you can obviously just fire up your Windows virtual machine within Mint and hopefully get back to being productive. Now, shouldn't be an issue if you're dual booting like we are, but again, there might be instances where you're doing some development work and you actually want to install a virtual machine, say, on your Linux Mint while you're doing it. You don't want to create a new physical machine. A virtual machine gives you that disposable test bed to play with. So now that we've got our virtual machine installed, well, it's just configuring it finally, but you can go into things like making it full screen. So this will now behave as though it's your actual machine that you're on, albeit obviously it's virtualized. So you might not get true one-to-one -one performance if you haven't got things like a GPU pass through. But as we can see here, this is all working. I should be able to fire up say Internet Explorer. Did I say Internet Explorer Edge? And you should be able to get up and running with internet Obviously, all of the crap that's coming with Microsoft trying to track you and pull you into everything. <laughs> that's why we're on Linux in the first place, right? But say if I just wanted to go to do a fast.com, I should get near one gig speed. So obviously it's virtualized. Fast isn't always accurate for me. But anyway, I've got internet access that's working. So we know that the network is working. Now, if we want to actually create a virtual machine using a bridge and not the NAT that we used before, we want to go down here to the networking tab and click on network connections. Now, conveniently, when you first create or install Vert Manager, for me at least, and I think it's pretty much for everyone, it should install a bridge for you. So this default virtual bridge zero. And that's a bit like VMBR zero when you have a look in your first install Proxmox. Now, what this has actually done here is created a bridge and it's assigned it to my VNet2, which I think down here is my 
plugged in network controller here so my physical if I turned on my wireless I would probably get another one here that I could attach to so that's bridging this virtual connection to this physical connection and now I can also click on the IPv4 settings now by default this has created this address space here which is I think just an internal address space for running it internally on the host I could change this to be a automatic so it should pick up the DHCP that's on my network. So you can either do that and change the VMBR0 to be automatic or if you wanted to you could also create say another bridge and you could click bridge and then create and then like before we want to actually bridge the connections to an adapter so we click add of the type ethernet and then we can choose which port we actually want it to go to. So in this case, we'd say the device. Um, I can't remember which one's which. I'm going to go with uh, this one here as my LAN. You can also clone a MAC address if you wanted to. But I should be able to click Save now. And now that's bridged to that port there. And if I click Save, that should create a new bridge connection here. So basically configure those however you want to. But the key thing now is we should be able to go back into creating a virtual machine. We can select the media that we wanted from before. And in this instance, I want to actually go down to the networking selection here. And instead of that default NAT, I should be able to click a bridge device. And if I do the ver br0, this time it should pick up that virtual bridge and it shouldn't give us that error of not being able to find it. So yeah, this time Windows is going to boot up and install and it's going to put it onto that virtual bridge. Excellent. That's just what we wanted to see. So I'm just going to force this one, turn it off. I don't need to install it again. I've already got my Windows uh, virtual machine running. So now that we've got this, we can obviously also delete that one that we don't need. Delete that. Yes. And we've got Windows 11 running in the background. And if I want to connect to that, I should be able to just double click it. And like I said, if you want to go into that full screen, you can just full screen it. And now it's as though we've pretty much got Windows 11 running as normal. Now, I'm not going to go into any sort of exotic setups with hardware pass through, but all of that is possible. And the way you do that is typically you want to shut down the virtual machine first. So let's shut this virtual machine down. And hopefully once it's shut down, we should be able to go into the settings for this virtual machine and do some more configuration. Now, if we want to make some fine grain changes to this, we can actually double click this machine here and we can click the I button. So this one up here, not super obvious, but in here you'll pretty much find all of the settings that you're used to on a virtual machine. So, for example, we can change the CPU. I've got it to copy the host by default anyway, which is great. You can obviously change the memory, boot options, add disks, all of those sorts of things, a bit like how you would do it on, say, Proxmox. What's interesting as well is you can actually add some new hardware as well. So if you wanted to, you could actually pass through, say, a PCI device. So I could pass through my GPU if that's possible. I'm not going to go into that video. I'm not going to go into those details in this video because it's going to involve things like looking up the PCI groups, etc., making sure that we don't have conflicts. But I've already covered that in a lot of detail on my Proxmox stuff. And basically all of those same sort of CLI commands should work because we're on Linux already. So you'd basically want to find out which groups each of these devices are in. And then if they're in their own unique group, you should be able to pass through that group to this machine. Windows is always a bit finicky with internal GPUs, but if you've got an external GPU you've plugged in, you should be able to pass that through and then get hardware acceleration out of your virtual machine. Anyway, I hope that gives you the basics of installing Virtual Machine Manager, how to create a virtual machine, how to edit it, and also how to create a bridge. This should hopefully plug the gap if you're wanting to do some virtual machines and have some testing whilst you're inside Linux Mint and you're used to things like Hyper-V, for example.